This is the GIS News Hour for Tuesday, October 12, 2010. I am Abigail McIntyre. In the headlines, Prime Minister Thomas expresses confidence in his finance minister. Job creation and construction are among the top priorities for the 2011 budget presentation. And Grenada's 37th year of independence to be transformed into a month long festival. Details to these and other stories are next. Uh, brings together 23 nations with one goal. Winning the Digicel Caribbean Cup. Let's celebrate the best in Caribbean football. Caribbean football. Check the press for details. Welcome back, viewers. Prime Minister the Honorable Tillman Thomas says he has the greatest confidence in the integrity of his Minister of Finance, Honorable Nazim Burke. Prime Minister Thomas describes the publication of a series of documents alleging the Finance Minister's involvement in offshore banking as a fabrication and an attempt to create distraction from his excellent management of the Grenada economy. I discovered that um, there are people among us who do not want to respect people's talents. God bless us all with different talents and different abilities. I find that there is a, how should I put it, some people, in a way, they, they just they don't want to accept the, the talent and the ability of the Minister of Finance. I mean, he, I mean, and Nelson Buck is doing an excellent job. That, that's his area, that, that you know, he's, he's good at it. And I believe there are those who, um, who do not want to recognize that what he's doing is really in a good foundation and they want to undermine him. You know, I think some people may be surprised at the way he's handling things and the way he, I mean, just two years uh, and, and, and the Ministry of Finance, we have our shortcomings, but I mean, he has done an excellent job, you know, and I think that it's purely an attempt to, to undermine him. Prime Minister Thomas speaks of behavior in some sections of the society of intellect without integrity and a desire to create uncertainty in people's mind. This intellect without integrity, these are the people who, who behind these things. They feel they're intelligent and they want to mislead the Grenadian people. But um, I, I, as you know, that we spoke a lot about uh, accountability in our campaign and we, we are committed to this. Right now, we have identified the, the members or uh, the commissioners for the Integrity in Public Life Act. The act was passed over two years ago. We are now laying the foundation to implement that act. Uh, we have identified the commissioners. We are I identifying space now, coming up with the budget. Before the end of the year, the integrity in public act would be established, that would be established. And all of us, um, all ministers or public officials, would have to um, declare their assets. The veteran politician and prime minister says he is deeply concerned about declining moral values in the country and warns that intellect without honesty and sincerity is a threat to a civil society. And not too long ago I was making the point, you know, uh, knowledge is good, intellect is good, but intellect without integrity is a threat to civilized society. There are some people who use the intellect, they become like rogues. But because, you know, and you must bear in mind, intellect without integrity is a threat to civilized society. And these are some of the things we need to, to really get our young people to embrace and adopt the, the right values. That is the core in, in our society, you know. People tend to find justification for, for certain conduct. Because you are poor, deprived, 
That is no justification to engage in illegal or delinquent type of activities. You see, the value, and, and this is where we need that spiritual connection. You see, a man is more than a physical entity. We need material things, you know, but we have, and we have to be sincere in, in what we are doing, you know, and, and I, there are people who, again, they think about strategy and this, and let, bear that in mind, Ray. I'll, I'll leave another saying which, which I believe in. The, the, the greatest strategy is sincerity. There is nothing, regardless of what you think, what strategy you may have, if you're not sincere, at the end of the day, you would fail. Prime Minister Thomas speaking there. Job creation, social safety net and protection, construction and reinvigorating economic activity. These will be on the priority list for government in the 2011 budget plan. In an interview with Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Finance, Mike Sylvester, next year's budget will take a more aggressive approach to getting Grenada on the move out of the current global financial and economic crisis. We get more in this report. The first budget consultation on Thursday, October 14 at the Grenada Trade Center Annex in Grand Anse will be held with trade union representatives nationwide. The current consultative process started back in July 29th when ministers of government, permanent secretaries and finance and planning officers met at the National Stadium for a budget retreat. Officers from the Caribbean Technical Assistance Center, CARTAC, introduced a new concept known as the Budget Planning and Preparation Format which was adopted and approved by Cabinet. This concept will allow the authorities to better allocate their resources in these tough times. Deputy Permanent Secretary Sylvester explains the new process. One of the things that you expect to see this year is a new budget format where we are now providing, for instance, for two forward years. Um, in the past, we provided just for the current budget year. Although the Parliament will be required just to approve uh, appropriate the, the current budget year, we will also be providing two forward years. So we will be providing estimates for 2012 as well as 2013. Um, we are at an important part of the, of the budget calendar now, which has to do with the whole issue of um, budget consultations, and that is, in a sense, in a simple sense, getting from stakeholders um, their input into the whole budget um, preparation and budget process. Now, the, we cannot sit in the Ministry of Finance and prepare, prepare a budget for the nation. Of course, the nation um, has, a, has an important role and what we intend to do um, over the next couple of days and weeks is to go out there in the public and solicit uh, input into the, the whole budget process. Mr. Sylvester, in his exclusive interview with the GIS, outlined the various dates and venues for other consultations with different sector representatives. We'll meet with the, the trade union uh, council, we'll meet with private sector organizations, we'll meet with civil um, society organizations, including the Conference of Churches, uh, as well as professional groups. Uh, so we have a, a group of consultations starting on the 14th of, of Thursday, the 14th of October. Um, we're going to meet with the Trade Union Council. We have a consultation on the 19th, where we're going to meet with private sector organizations, um, including businesses, employers, um, persons in the, the tourism sector, community boards, uh, sorry, commodity boards, uh, the fishing cooperatives, the marketing national importing board. Um, we have a consultation with civil society organizations, um, the NGOs, as I said, and that will be on the 19th of October, Tuesday, the 19th of October. And the we have a consultation with professional groups, and that is carried for Thursday, October 21st. All right. Um, professional groups include medical, the persons in the banking association, in the, in the banking sector, insurance companies, credit unions, engineers, architects, members of the, the bar association, Garfing, the contractors association, insurance advisors association, the custom brokers association, and so on. All these, these consultations are expected to take place at the Grenada Trade Center Annex. The sector meetings culminate with a national budget consultation on October 28. On that date, all stakeholders will return and go over the priority areas for the 2011 budget year. 
The head of the University of the West Indies in Grenada says there is an upward trend in the number of Grenadians seeking diplomas and degrees at tertiary institutions. Dr. Curtis Jacob, resident tutor at UE Center, says enrollment for courses offered locally by the University of the West Indies has doubled in the past five years. I am sensing in Grenada a, a, a thirst for knowledge and qualifications and certification which um, which I see has become a national industry in Trinidad nearby. And um, I see that taking place. And, you know, Marisha, I think since 2005, I think the enrollment at Marisha House has almost doubled since then. It used to be 145, I think, and it's going to be 300 and something now. Mm -hmm. So it is, um, it is it's almost doubled. And I am seeing that, you know, there are lots of people are talking to you all the time about, you know, things which could be done or what it would like to do in Grenada. Uh. UAE is expanding its services in Grenada with plans for the establishment of an open campus in Hope St. Andrew. Lands for the construction of the campus will be handed over to UAE officials on Sunday, October 17, by Prime Minister Honorable Tillman Thomas. Dr. Jacob calls on the open campus in Hope a major development in the acquisition of land by the UAE for educational purposes. It is believed to be the third single, third single largest land grant in the history of the University of the West Indies, which began in 1946, 1947. It is believed that there's only um, Mona campus, which is 650 acres, and St. Augustine, which is 277, and Cable, which is originally 45, and has been extended across the road to about maybe 80 this one is likely to be larger than, than Cave Hill. Dr. Jacob says his personal dream is to see the establishment in Grenada of a center for media studies. I would like to, I would like to have or to help to establish a center where people who, when they are finished, can do every single thing to do with, um, with, uh, with, with media you know, how to write a story, how to set out, a, um, you know, the stories on a page, how to fix a camera, how to use a dark room, how to conduct an interview, how to do makeup, how to use voice. Every, every single aspect of, um, of media, including dress and so on. And hopefully I, w I would like to see that, um, that take place. In addition to which, um, um, we need to have a, a television station and a radio station as well too. I'm Dr. Curtis, a resident tutor at the University of the West Indies, Grenada. The dental health service in Karakou and Petit Martinique has taken a major step forward. For the first time ever, the people of Karakou and Petit Martinique have their own resident dentist. He is Dr. B. Salvakuma, an Indian-born dentist. In the, past, dental, in the past, dental service was provided once a week through a visiting dentist from Grenada. Dr. Selva Koma will offer general dental services every weekday at the Hillsborough Health Center and will visit P.T. Martinique twice per month. Javan Williams, Acting Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Karakou and P.T. Martinique Affairs, described the provision of the resident dental professional as part of a collaborative effort to reorganize and refocus the delivery of quality health care service to the people. The government of Prime Minister Tillman Thomas has committed itself to enhancing socio-economic life in Karakou and P.T. Martinique and allowing greater autonomy for the islands through the establishment of local government. In other news, the Grenada Authority for the Regulation of Financial Institutions, GARFIN, is doing all in its power to ensure the effects of the global financial crisis does not slow down operations within the organization. On the GIS Spice Morning program on Tuesday, Director of GARFIN, Angus Smith, revealed a list of strategies that will keep his organization above the waters during the continued crisis. Mr. Smith said there are lots of lessons to be learned from the financial crisis, one of them being the importance of having good and effective regulation and legislation. This, he stated, was admitted by U.S. President Barack Obama. President Obama 